Okay, hi everyone. Um, doesn't help that the, the talk in front of me was uh, called uh, how, to, how you can ditch JavaScript, because today I'm actually going to talk about JavaScript. Uh, I thought I was going to talk at JSConf, but unfortunately I got put on uh, CSSConf. I know for a fact that you could do 3D on the web with CSS, but that's not something that I'm going to talk about today. So apologize for those who has that idea. So about me, uh, my name is Shia Luo. I am a developer advocate at Autodesk. So Autodesk is a 3D um, computer software company, if you guys don't know. Um, so basically, we have built a lot of products around uh, 3D uh, and also in the browser. So I, was, I just wanted to show you guys this today. So um, I'm going to go through a very simple and uh, good, uh, very small example for, for writing 3D on the web. And it's basically going to resemble this. I'm going to only take you through from step one through four here. And uh, from step four to five, it requires a lot of studying. And um, I'll show you what I exactly mean later. So basically, 3D on the web is WebGL and WebGL 101. It's based on a, a WebGL is based on something called OpenGL ES. It's not the same thing, uh, but it's a very similar syntax, if you guys have any experience. It's meant for the browsers, and it's very, very difficult. And I'm going to show you guys exactly what it is. Here is a very simple, simple sample code of drawing one triangle with WebGL. It's about 100 lines of code, and you get a triangle like this. So it, it, this is GL programming. So it's basically calling API, and API and uh, draws from the GPU. So if you are doing very uh, graphics-heavy stuff uh, on, on the browser, this is what you want to use. And luckily, there are a lot of ways to simplify this. There's a, a lot of existing libraries and uh, frameworks that, that let you do this. So today, I'm just going to talk about something that is very versatile. Um, an easier way of 3D on the web. So there are a lot of different libraries to choose from. There's like 3JS, Babylon.js, A-Frame. Sometimes someone from Mozilla is going to talk about A-Frame, so I don't like to th steal their thunder. Um, there are game engines like Unity that exports to WebGL, but it's, very, it's for very, very specific use cases. So I'm just going to talk about something that's very versatile right here, which is 3JS. And this is a link to the 3JS website. So 3JS basically abstract away some triangles in GL programming. Instead of doing all that, like this is th these three lines are doing more stuff than what that 100 lines did back there. So in, to draw a cylinder in 3D space, you basically specify a number of triangles that makes up a cylinder. Instead of writing all those triangles by yourself with vertices, um, you could just var cylinder equals new 3.mesh and uh, new cylinder geometry. Um, so if you want to draw a square, it's like a square geometry. So to get started with 3.js, there are four things that you need. You need a scene, camera, renderer, and your control. And you want to fill stuff in your scene, and you want to animate the scene. So that's like very basic uh, 3D scene things that you need. So here, I'm going to talk about three functions. So the init function is going to init, initialize the scene, camera, render, and controls. The fill scene, scene is going to put stuff in the scene, and then I'm going to animate it. It should be quite straightforward. So in 3.js, when you initialize uh, the, the, the scene, there's a new three scene. Uh, and then you get a camera, which, is a, which I'm going to use a perspective camera here. It's a very, um, very commonly used 3D camera as opposed to orthographic camera, which is like viewing 2D on 3D. But we don't have to go, to go in too deep here. And you're passing a, a bunch of variables, basically the inner clipping plane, the outer clipping plane, and how, how big you want, you want your uh, camera to view. And then you pass in the, you, you instantiate the renderer and set the color of the renderer and the size. And then for the control, here I'm using, again, a very generic 3D control that, that is um, 
commonly used in 3D scenes. And then in the end, you just use your renderer to render your scene and camera. So in the beginning, after you initialize everything, it's, very, it's, it's just a scene. It's, it's not special at all right now. So the next step, what I did is uh, you fill scene. Um, basically, I've instantiated a bunch of particles um, all in, all with the 3JS material. This is very, very basic 3-dot mesh. Um, and it's a particle, it's, it, it's the particle geometry and particle material is uh, you know, basically what you want to pass in as parameters. And I said, I randomized the positions, and randomized uh, the directions I want to take, because I want to uh, animate those particles. And I add the particles into the scene. So I have a randomized set of particles in the 3D space. We can't really do anything right now yet. It's still nothing special. It's, it doesn't move. But uh, we're getting there. So the last thing I want to do is to animate. Animating is less of a actual animating. You want to consider it less as animating the objects, but more to, to uh, tell the browser what to do each time it calls request animation frame. So request animation frame is something that uh, you know, whenever the browser refreshes a frame, um, you, it, it will call the function within request animation frame. So in computer rendered animation, it needs to be 60 frames per second. And that's exactly what request animation frame does. Uh, with a lot of graphics programmers, they like, still use this at timeout, which is something that I really am against. Um, so basically, uh, in my code, I'm going to call animate in the request animation frame function. So again, I'm up, up, I added my controls, so I, I'm updating my controls. And I run a for loop through each of the particles, and uh, I, I move the particles every time the, uh, the request animation frame is called. And then I, I also set a boundary where if the particle reaches an edge, it bounces back. So it's, it's still a very simple code. And I render it again each time um, I animate. So here, it's moving very slowly. And this is a 3D scene, so I can use orbit controls. So yeah, this is still very, very basic. So this is a source code. And if you want to get a VR-like effect, you basically replace the camera, uh, the, some of the parameters in the camera, and replace the control with something called device orientation controls. So basically, that uh, hooks up your camera, your, your phone or, or VR device uh, orientation with, with the scene. So here's the demo. If you guys have a QR code scan scanner, uh, I encourage you to try it. I'm just going to give you guys a minute. It's, it basically goes to the website that I built for this. So if you have a phone that you purchased after 2014, you should have 3D enabled and be able to see it rendered with the devices. OK. So everyone got it? So again, um, this is step four. To really make really cool animations in the, in, with 3D space, I'm going to show you guys what we've done. And, and this may be some inspiration of what you could really do with 3JS. So, so this is a library that uh, we've built on, on top of 3JS. With This is like a computer-aided design model. And, and I'm in the browser. So you can look at how, just how good the rendering is and the materials are. So you can zoom into each of the particle or the, the, or the element and basically look at these engineering drawings. And this was built with a, with a uh, industrial design. This, this model was drawn with an industrial design uh, the software. 
So everything that was in the that was in the design actually got ported into the browser. And and uh, it's the, the library behind it is 3JS, and that's why I'm talking about it today. So with this, you can basically we we have tied a bunch of JavaScript functions uh, with th this. Everything is basically a JavaScript object. So we have typed, typed a lot of JavaScript functions. So you can do like explode or rotate. And this, what this basically is doing is doing a transfer, transformation to, your, to the object in your 3D scene. And it's just very significant how far we've gotten to, to render 3D on, uh, in the website, because in a website, because this, uh, we have n not done any optimi uh, optimization to, to render this. Uh, because we, what, we, what we do as a company is um, we, we do in engineering data. So none of these data can be lost, and we do no optimization to, to the number of polys. Like, we don't, we don't re reduce the number of polys in, in this drawing. So, yeah. So there's a bunch of demos. Um, we have also like built a lot of uh, functions with these type of 3D models. You could you could again like explode explode it, or you could do a sectioning. Like you can section this whatever model, 3D model you have. So sometimes I will hear um, people that have touched, that front end developers that have touched a little bit on WebGL and said that WebGL isn't really promising. This is like a proof against that. And because this is, again, engineering data, you have like all the properties and, and all the, all the statistics on, on each of the part. <laughs> and uh, there, there's just another thing I wanted to show you, guys, of uh, what we've built. This is um, Project Apollo. And uh, we basically uh, collaborated with, it, look, uh, with the university and uh, put in the model of the uh, of the space space capsule, and and showed it to the public, and and you can click on the link and look at everything. And honestly, this is really best achieved with WebGL. You can't really do it with anything, any other technology. And lastly, I just want to finish off with this beautiful rendering, and that's also one of the things that people said. Uh, about WebGL is it doesn't have as much textures as uh, OpenGL. Uh, however, you can really write very, very beautiful rendering and graphics in the browser. OK, that's it, all my talk. And uh, this is a QR code for the slides if you guys want to uh, check it out. <laughs>